Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is July 13th. It's Sunday. I just got back from vacation last night at midnight. So we're going to take a candid walk through, through the garden, see what's going on. I can tell you after seven days of, of being unattended, we're going to find some surprises. And it really did get uh, overgrown. The biggest issue with anybody going on vacation is how do you get your container plants watered? And I had a neighborhood kid help out. He turned on the sprinkler three times. Um, during the week and really did a good job of taking care of everything. But at the same time, we also had these crazy storms, also had a tornado not too far from here, and it did turn over some cars. But the plants did pretty well overall. Let me show you my first mistake. I have a couple uh, true drop systems from Crescent Garden, and they are the best self-contained watering system around. But I forgot that this doesn't have any drainage. I basically fill this once drop in a tomato plant and it will take care of it for weeks before I have to refill the reservoir. But forgetting that it didn't have any drainage, it was completely flooded last night. I did come out and see this. I turned it to the side, but you can see all the water in there. It just rotted out the root system of this midnight snack tomato. It was going to be part of a video series. I don't know if it's going to recover, but this is what overwatering looks like. The plants die off looking something like that. They're pretty beat up. We're going to drain this and put it out in the sun and hopefully it, it takes care of itself. But the plants up here really survived well. The Swiss chard looks great. There's some disease showing on the leaves. This will get a baking soda spray. I don't like to spray anything stronger on it because I eat the leafy greens pretty regularly and don't want any kind of residue. The tomato in here, this was a... I can't read it now, but <laughs> a black sum variety. I have way too many tomato varieties. And it did really well. Some leaf die off, but it, it looks pretty good. It broke the support that was in there, but I'll take care of that. Coming across here, some plants are in different uh, levels of flowering and seeding. They'll get all pulled out. This basil will get all removed. Once basil starts flowering, the flavor, flavor really changes. And I'll just drop in some new seed. The patio tomatoes did pretty well. They did start to split because they were getting too much water. So they're determinate varieties. So they'll be pulled out of those pots. Something new will be going in. The orange cayennes all turned orange just about while I was gone. So they're going to get dried. That's great for hot pepper, for pasta sauces and stuff like that. Hell, oh, my okra really got large. So and it's starting to form on there. Let's go down into the garden and just see what's happening. The eggplant are massive. I did harvest these before I left and gave them to friends. The leaves look pretty good. Some holes, but not too much of a worry. So that's great. Let's see if there's anything growing in there. There's one eggplant right in there. That's ready to be harvested. Maybe I'll make that tonight. And see not too much else going on, but they look pretty good. Now, if we spin around, you know, one strategy is, is you can take all your containers and just put them into a small space so that, you know, when you leave, have somebody come and turn a sprinkler on. This way, all my container plants were hit with water and did pretty well. Lots of strawberries in there too. Not too bad. Now, these are the greens that I cut back to really stumps while I was gone and I'm kind of feeling there's going to be problems on here. Yeah, there's some sort of insect on here. The white flies probably came back pretty quickly. Again, you can see all the water in there. It just rained. But when you cut back your kales, they don't die. They come back like with a vengeance. So these are going to be all sweet tender leaves for the uh, September, October fall garden. So if you have greens, cabbage, uh, even cabbages actually. But if you have kales, collards that are problematic, remove all the leaves, leave the stumps, give them a nice drink of a water-soluble nitrogen fertilizer, and they're going to come back and leaf for you a second time. The tomatoes in here where I buried the stems look pretty good. This one has some die-off, and it's not necessarily a terrible disease. I'm going to give it some nitrogen fertilizer, water soluble, remove the leaves. But there's a lot of new growth coming in, like right here and in different spots. The tomatoes are starting to ripen. I'll probably eat that one. 
Now one of them that's doing really well, where I did the uh, bearing of the stem, is right here. This was a tiny little plant when I left, and it's totally grown, and it'll start to flower and bear fruit. So that doesn't look so bad. Now here's the cherry tomato midnight snack, an All-America Selections winner that I'm doing a whole series on, and it looks pretty good too. I'm happy with that. Some leaf spot and problems in there. That could be even, sometimes you, your plants will get algae growth on the leaves. Very weird, depending on in your area. But look at all the tomatoes. That's going to be shot in a series this week. And finally, some gorgeous tomatoes. Ooh, well that one fell off. It means i got to eat it. That is asparagus. You always have to let your asparagus grow for an entire season, leave some stalks in there because this is how your asparagus kind of recharges the root system and takes care of itself. Completely overgrown. This is a lemon cucumber. Now they are slow to form female flowers. So you get a lot of male flowers to start, then the female flowers follow and the cucumbers follow. But this whole area is doing pretty good. It's uh, quite overgrown. These are purple potted beans and I don't see any forming in there yet but tons of flowers so that's going to be producing soon. Coming right into here these are my pickling cucumbers, my I think straight aid or market moor, yeah my market moors and they're starting to form but they look good. These are some purple whole uh, pink eye cowpeas right in the middle here. I was expecting more powdery mildew and more problems, so I'm really, really happy with how this looks. And I did spray before I left. So another tip is, is when you're going away, try and get all your sprays and um, products that you put down on your plants on the night before you leave, because it will really give them protection if needed. These are my hot peppers, and they're doing really well. These are golden pepperoncinis right here. My red cayennes. Scotch bonnets, probably have jalapenos in there. The jalapenos look good. So I will do a whole harvest video today too. So much is coming in. I'm really, really happy. Mine is drowning that plant up there. I can't believe I did that. Those peppers look delicious. Let's make sure those are the Anaheims. I like when they start to turn some color, I'll pick them. Things look pretty good. More jalapenos. These are all my sweet peppers. They're doing really well. They're all going to get harvested today. Look at just the different colors in there. Tons and tons of peppers. So peppers look good. They survived. I've been having great luck with peppers this year. A lot more tomato disease coming in than I'm used to. But the peppers are doing really well. This is the black cherry. That tomato is done. The bumblebee, you can see, I've been talking about this, does really well um, against cracking when too much water gets into the ground. Has been doing really well against the leaf spot and early blight. And the tip that I gave you before is plant a lot of different types of tomatoes. Keep track of the ones that do well in your area. Stop growing the ones that don't. And eventually you'll get, you know, a dozen or so of tomatoes that do really, really well in your zone. This is my spaghetti squash plant. The other thing you want to be doing is looking for pests. Those are squash bug eggs right there, so that'll get removed. This plant's looking kind of beat up. Maybe it needs to have a feeding or some sort. There is a spaghetti squash back there that is, you know, has a brown bottom and something got to it. That's a little bit big for it to really be a pollination issue, so I'm going to have to inspect that. There's a squash right in there. Some more kale. And when you see patterns like that on your leaves, it's usually something eating them on the undersides. Disease sets in. And again, we had so much water, it's been ridiculous. And I would be, yeah, look, all this, the white flies came back in while I was gone. So that's all going to have to be taken care of. You really want to keep a schedule of spraying, managing pests, managing diseases. And that's what I've been doing for most of the season. And of course, when you go on vacation, you want to go on vacation. Sometimes it's hard to keep that routine up. And once the routine is broken, pests and disease set in. Here's something interesting. You know, I get a, there's 
you can see asparagus right down at the bottom. I'm actually going to pick that and eat it. Typically, I get one harvest of asparagus. I get it in uh, uh, March, April, and May. You know, harvest what I want out of the spears. When they're about that size, and then you have to leave a lot to, again, get fully mature so that they grow, they get charged by the sun, the root systems get strong, the plants expand, and next year you get even more spears. But I'm going to have some for dinner again tonight, all the way in the middle of August. Completely overgrown. Let's go over to that side. In here, you can see the problem with the leaves. And it really does look like a leaf spot of some sort. Tons of nice red tomatoes. I'll harvest those. It's kind of tough though. You know, you want to go on vacation, but gardens take a lot of care. The container, squash and zucchini are doing really well. This was a second planting that I planted by seed because the first plant that was a transplant didn't do well. It was struggling. Rather than leaving struggling plants in the ground, just go and drop new seed. The newly seeded plant, germinated plant, will catch up and grow past struggling plants nine times out of ten. It's really worth just, you know, biting the bullet, pulling out the problematic plant, and just putting in new seed. It looks like four bees in there on one plant. Not so bad. My other squash is probably some mega squash in here, I hope. Let's see if we can find anything. Well, that's hard to believe. No squash growing on there. And again, I don't see a whole lot of powdery mildew or problems. I see a cucumber that's crazy. Um, that plant is struggling. That is, I think, my white scallop squash. I think I might have to remove that. Coming over here, here is what a cucumber, a lemon cucumber looks like. They're absolutely delicious. Some squash that need to be pulled off. That's not too bad. I did plant some radishes that really took off while I was gone. I'm getting ready to put in all my cool season crops. This was an experiment. Wanted to see how early I could drop them in. They're about two weeks old. I start putting in my cool weather lettuces, greens, radishes, about now, maybe a week ago, and really get ready for my second cool weather harvest in September, October, and sometime into November. Here is my okra. These okra are too big. They're going to be tough. You want to pick okra when it's about... I don't know, about three inches long. It's nice and tender that way. So if you ever want to know how to save seed from cucumbers, is you stop picking them. Well, luckily here's one that's perfect. This is the size that you pick. Now, when they're on the vine too long, they start to look like this, and the flavor changes, and you can see that they're starting to yellow, and that probably won't taste too good. Now when you're collecting seed, you keep them on there until they look like this. They will get massive, kind of be this orange-yellow color, and that's when the seeds are fully mature, and this is what the transition looks like. You know, this is the size we would harvest and eat them. This one's a little bit too big, where the seeds are mature, uh, maturing, and this is when you would harvest them, and you would just pull the seeds out and let them dry on a plate. I'll come back and get those. A lot of my tomato plants need to come out, but I have some wonderful pink tomatoes there. A little bit smaller than the baseball size. Here are some different peppers, all nice and red, ready to be, be, be picked. So I'm going to have tons of vegetables. Another cayenne pepper plant that are starting to turn. Nice peppers in there. These are my yard-long beans that have taken off, and they're doing pretty well. No problems on the leaves, but I will inspect everything there. Marigolds, more zucchini, and what I'm really looking for for the zucchini, and I've been using peppermint spray. Um, I don't think peppermint spray really helps with powdery mildew. However, I don't have any powdery mildew, and it usually rolls in in August, and especially when left unattended, I thought it would be a problem. Let's see what we have growing. Things are flowering, but I don't see any more zucchini in there. My Brussels sprouts have had some sort of issue going on. We need to figure out what that is, remove the leaves. 
probably again white flies are back in here. More squash bug eggs right there. So you can see you get a lot of problems just by not taking a look at your garden over you know even a seven day period. Now here's the perfect size for okra. That would be delicious. These are getting too big. They're gonna they're great for ornamental decorations but they're gonna have to be removed. So that's generally how my garden is looking right now. Amaranth. More peppers back there. Let's go to one more place. I started my cool weather crops like I told you. I want to show you a bed that I'm working on. This is my cool weather bed for fall cool weather crops and a lot of people don't know. You can grow the cool weather vegetables. Uh, beets, cabbages, broccoli, lettuces, radishes, peas. Usually two times in certain zones and in zone seven you can grow them in the spring and grow them in the fall. Now the radishes I showed you earlier I said were two weeks old. They're actually three weeks old. The radishes here are two weeks old. They were planted on July 31st. So I have beets coming in right there, spinach, radishes, lettuce, endive, that's kohlrabi, peas. These are all cool weather crops and you can see the tops of the peas have been chewed down. Some rabbit got their head in there and rabbits will only take the tops. They leave the plant root system intact and they leave some leaves intact so that they grow back and they can come back and eat them again. I guess that's a evolutionary thing which makes a rabbit kind of smart. They don't kill off their food source, they just take the tops and they come back again and again. So the cool weather crops, the best way to figure out when to do a fall planting is you want to kind of figure out when frost comes in your area and then count back about 75 days and you can get your cool weather crops growing, you know, what is that, 10 weeks, 12 weeks towards the end of the season so that you get full mature plants. And again, I've got beets, spinach, radishes, lettuce, endive, and kohlrabi, and that should all do well since I've, I'm going to give it at least 75 days. The frost will come in October in my area. All right, let's go back down to the garden. So I thought I would conclude when the sun's a little bit higher and you can see everything now uh, in full sunshine. So a week has gone by, and in just one week, if you're not there to tend your garden, and of course, like I was saying, you got to go on vacation and you have to have a life, your garden can be overwhelmed with disease, with pests. I'll take care of the white flies. I'll take care of the squash bugs. Even in here, you can see I'm on my third harvest of green beans. They're doing really, really well, and I've been taking care of this with uh, peppermint oil. So it's going to take me the entire week to really take care of this garden, get it back in shape, and I'll do videos on what I'm doing to care for it in mid-August. One area I wanted to show you real quick is I'm going to be doing beer brewing videos and wanted to keep it in the realm of the rusted garden. So I've planted a bunch of hop plants. This is Centennial. I put these in about four weeks ago. They are perennials in many zones. In Maryland Zone 7 they are for sure. The frost will not kill off the root system. So next year these are going to be 12 foot tall vines. I'll have to figure out how to trellis them and how to be able to harvest them. That's a Chinook hops and that's Cascade back there. But I'm going to have my own hops plants. So the garden survived it did pretty well this is what it looks like and i hope you enjoyed the video candid look at what's been going on after a week of growth and no tending please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com i just restocked it with neem oil thanks for watching